All right, this, I believe, should be our last video lecture on artificial neural networks. Uh, we are going to be talking about how do we take this great model that we've just built and use it to actually make predictions in a real-world context. So we're going to pick, off, pick up where we left off. Uh, so we had just fit this model. We have, uh, we've looked at it. Um, at its accuracy through the R squared metric and through a parity plot. We've looked at the training history. Um, if you remember, we scaled our data way back here. Um, we used this, this min-max scalar to scale our Y and our X data. And we created this object, uh, X, that has all the scaling information built into it. So as we've gone, when we, when we come here and we make these model predictions, it's important to remember that these are still in the scaled form. And that's why uh, our parity plot spits out numbers that are between 0 and 1 still. But our actual values had uh, magnitudes much greater than this. So if we, want to, uh, if we want to translate our results back into their original uh, units, we need to go and unscale the data. So fortunately, because when we used min-max scalar, um, we, we built all of that scaling information into an object. What we can do now is we can go refer back to that object, specifically the uh, Y scalar information. So here we, um, so we created this Y scalar equals min-max scalar, and then we told this y scalar dot fit transform uh, to transform our data. So this it's actually this y scalar and this x scalar that retain all that information about how our data was scaled. So now that we have made these predictions and we have these uh, model predictions for our training and testing data, um, as well as we still have the raw scaled values, we can go now and and do the inverse of that to unscale our data. So these commands. I'm generating a new uh, new variable called y prediction. So this is what my model would predict in the unscaled form. And what I'm doing is I'm running y scalar dot inverse transform um, to this y model test. So I'm undoing that scaling that I did prior to running all the fitting and doing the accuracy evaluation. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm creating this new variable y actual. Um, this is just, this is unscaling now my Y testing data. So this is getting us back to the, uh, the raw units of my testing data. So when I run this, um, that's going to be undoing the scaling and putting these back into their original units, both my actual data and my prediction data. So I can print those and look at them, but I'm actually going to do another little exercise where I plot them. And I like to do, so I think this is an interesting way of presenting this kind of information to people that you work with, to management, potentially to clients. If you are, if you've developed this uh, artificial neural network model, you could use this as a digital twin of a plant. So I think you'd want to show people uh, what the real plant is doing, and then what your digital twin or what your your model, your artificial neural network is predicting. So I like to do that with a a step plot. So first, because our data doesn't really have time values, I'm just going to create a counter. This is something that I can put on the x-axis. So I'm just going to say count. And this is going to just going to create uh, an array of numbers from 0 up to the total number that are in my y uh, prediction vector. Ooh, and I forgot to import NumPy. I have not used NumPy. So I'm just going to import uh, NumPy as np first. OK, so that creates my counter. And now I'm going to generate a step plot for this data. And if you remember, I have not one, but two outputs. So I'm going to create a step plot for both of those uh, using a command like this. So plt.step, I'm going to plot this count. Just uh, This is basically just the sample number on the x-axis. I'm going to plot my, my the Y1 here, basically, this is my the first column of my prediction matrix. I'm going to make that red. And I'm just going to, uh, this mid will come in later. This is just saying, 
put the middle of my step exactly where the uh, data point is. All right, then I'm gonna do the same thing for my Y2 value, which is in the second column. I'm gonna make this green, so my first one will be red, my second one will be green. Um, I want to add to this plot the actual data. So uh, these steps will be my predicted data, and I'm going to use dots to represent the actual data. So here, instead of plt.step, here I'm using plt.plot. And I'm telling it for my Y1 actual data, I want that to be a red dot to go along with my red line. And for Y2, I want that to be a green dot to go along with my green line. I'm just gonna add some samples, I mean some, sorry, labels to all of this. All right, here I'm just adding labels on the x-axis. I just want this to be my sample number. I just want to increase font sizes to make this more readable and add a legend where we have a Y1 prediction because that's the first thing I'm plotting, Y2 prediction, then the actuals uh, for each of those. And I'm going to make this plot interactive so that I can zoom in later. And I'm probably gonna to wanna to make this a little bit smaller and hopefully this works. So I've got all my plotting commands in there and I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Okay, so this gives me a very noisy plot um, with my legend on there. Remember this, I have a whole bunch of, my, my full uh, range of data was over a, a thousand data points. So my testing data is about 200 data points. You can see, uh, it, this is kind of hard to make good interpretations here, but you can see the dots are lining up on the lines, generally speaking. But if I click here, I can zoom in on this and look at this with a little bit higher resolution. All right, when I zoom in on this, this gives me my sample number here on the x-axis. And you can actually see uh, where my predictions are made with these lines are lining up remarkably close to where the actual data is. So this is a great way of presenting this, the value of a, a digital twin model or the value of a essentially our our machine learning neural network model serves as a digital twin of our plant or our, whatever our system was that gave us this data in the first place. So this is a good way of presenting it in my opinion because you can show, okay, my prediction. Um, first you can predict where your system is gonna go um, in advance and then you see that that's confirmed to be roughly in that same spot when the data comes in. And here, because we had such ice high R squared and such good um, modeling accuracy, you can see these line up remarkably well. Thank you so much for tuning in to this series on uh, machine learning and then talking about this class of models called neural networks. And then just a reminder, this specific type of neural network that we have created here as a multi-layer perceptron, but their machine learning is such a huge space and it is growing so fast. Um, this multi-layer perceptron is really kind of the most basic and simple type of neural network. Even then you can see that it is remarkably powerful and once you understand how neural networks work, uh, you can learn more, much more advanced models to capture some pretty sophisticated relationships in real world systems.